Hi, following the previous tutorial about PicoWeb and how to set an HTTP uh, web server on MicroPython running on the SP32, um, in this post I'm going to, to go a little bit deeper on the functionalities of, uh, uh, of this uh, framework, a uh, very minimalistic but yet powerful framework, and I'm going to explain how we can change the, um, uh, the content type of an answer to request made to one of the routes we set up. So, uh, just doing a quick review, uh, as usual, we start by importing the mod module, the PicoWeb module, then we create uh, uh, an app object, uh, we can name it uh, whatever we like, in this case I'm naming it my app. Uh, next, uh, what I'm going to do, just to introduce you to the test we are going to do and show the differences of the content type, is setting up two routes. Uh, where one of uh, and I'm going to return in uh, in both routes the same content, but in the first route I'm going to specify it as text slash HTML, meaning the browser should interpret it as HTML and render it. And in the second case I'm going to return it as text slash plain, meaning that the browser will not interpret the the content received, will not render it as HTML and will actually show show us the, the source code. Uh, so, uh, we need to, to define our HTML. I'm going to put it here on a variable. As you, you can see, uh, even if you are not uh, very familiar with HTML, this is just a very basic table. This is the way we specify a table in HTML. Um, and for the sake of readability, uh, I spawn these across multiple lines, although you, you could have put everything in uh, a line. And since I'm doing it in multiple lines, we need to use triple quotes, uh, so Python uh, doesn't throw us uh, an error. So it will interpret this as just one string. Uh, going forward, then we'll set up the, the first route. Uh, it will be listening on slash uh, HTML. And it's on this route that uh, we will return the content as text uh, slash HTML. As usually, um, we we start uh, the we start our handling function uh, by calling the start response uh, method of the PicoWeb module. Um, and uh, here, before we just pass the the um, stream writer, the the stream writer this uh, this parameter we call the rest from response uh, is basically a stream writer to which we can uh, write the content to return to the uh, to our client and um, additionally now we'll set the content type by default this content type is actually text slash html so in this first case it's uh, kind of redundant but for uh, exemplification purposes I'm, I'm also setting the, the this content type uh, next, we um, we call the a write method to write the HTML content we defined earlier. Uh, not that we are using the yield from keywords. I'm not going to explain how how this work, uh, but it is related to the synchronous uh, functioning of this uh, framework. So moving forward, uh, we have the slash test text route. Basically, it's the second route that will be listening on this endpoint. Uh, the handling function is exactly the same, except that from, for the, the start response uh, method, we'll set the content type as text slash plain. Uh, basically, this is the structure of our of our app, of, or you can see it of our API if you if you prefer. But uh, it's very simple. Finally, to start uh, to actually start our uh, our app and to make it listen. Um, for incoming requests, we call the run method on our app object. I'm leaving here the debug equals to true just to to print so that the framework prints some additional messages on the command line. And uh, next, we need to specify the host. And um, uh, as I've said to complete this tutorial, the SP needs to to be connected to the to the Wi-Fi. Uh, I've already done that here. Uh, again, this is outside the scope of this video, but I will leave a link explaining how you can connect to Wi-Fi on MicroPython. But basically, I'm going to put here the the IP uh, that was printed when connecting. It will print multiple IPs, 
this one is not uh, is not a, a local IP these are local IPs but uh, we should use the one that uh, doesn't end in uh, 254 uh, so yours will probably be different from mine but uh, the one on the left should be the one to be used um, well the, the app is finally uh, uh, we have seen everything about the app uh, so um, I'm also going to leave you a link for the, the UPyCraft TDA if you are not yet familiar with it. This simplifies a lot the process of developing. So as you can see, I, I have my 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 uh, script here. Now I just need to save it. I already had a, a, a version saved, so I just need to, to save it again. And I click just this button, and it will upload the script to my... To my uh, ASP32 and it will automatically run it. If you are using another another manual way of uh, of doing this, then uh, you may need to run the script manually. Uh, sorry, this kind of messed up here because I, I scrolled down. It messed up here the the, the prompt. But nonetheless, uh, as you can see, this should be the last line printed. Uh, this messed up because I I've scrolled. But as you can see. Uh, that the message we saw in the previous video indicating that the, the server is running on the IP we specified and on the default port 8081 so I'm going to copy this be careful don't do a control plus C because it won't copy on your PyCraft uh, IDA it just cancelled the, the currently running script so you need to right click and hit copy at least for this version of your PyCraft this may change in the future then I have already Chrome opened here, so, and I'm going to access this URL. Uh, note that I'm accessing the, the um, basically the index route, and this is giving me a Z, uh, 404 because I did not define any handling function for for the index route. But if I go to the slash HTML, which was one of the route we defined, we have here our uh, nice HTML table rendered. Uh, now if we change this to the text endpoint, as you can see, we will receive the code. Uh, why this is not being rendered? Because we are saying that to the browser that what we have returned is uh, text, uh, it's plain text, and it should not render it as HTML. So basically, uh, this is how we can change the, the content type. As you can see, it gives us more flexibility. You could uh, have returned other things, such as JSON or XML or other stuff. And uh, this is how we do it. Thank you very much for watching.